thank you for joining us today for We've Got Issues. I'm Nancy Furness, and I'm here with my co-host, Brad Nickerson. And We've Got Issues is a nonpartisan, citizens-based forum where we look at issues of interest to the Tri-Cities. And today we're filming at the Fountainhead Network in Coquitlam. And I'd just like to acknowledge that our um, interview is taking place on the ancestral, traditional, and unceded territories of Coquitlam First Nations. So we thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and to protect the lands, the waters, and all that lies ab above and below. So, um, I also like to say thank you to Telesoptic and Tri Cities Community Television for making our program possible. Today we're joined by Ben Perry, who is taking a run for Coquitlam City Council. So thank you so much for joining us today, Ben. Thanks. It's a, a pleasure to have you here. And I was wondering if you could just maybe start by telling us a little bit about yourself, your background. And what inspired you to run for, for Coquitlam City Council? Yeah, thanks, Nancy, and thanks, Brad. Um, so I uh, grew up in Coquitlam, uh, starting way back in late 1970s. And uh, I've moved away sometimes, moved back, uh, have a family here. Um, and for the past seven, eight years, I've been doing some climate activism in the city, uh, in the Tri-Cities. Um, and people have urged me to run. I think it's really important that we have uh, someone on council who's going to advocate for climate action issues and other important social justice issues. That's great. And can you maybe, um, I think you've alluded to it a little bit, but could you tell us what your priorities would be as a, a city councillor for Coquitlam? Yeah, so I think uh, what I should say is that Coquitlam is taking some steps in the right direction on climate. Uh, this year, they're having a climate action plan. Uh, and I, I think it's important. And that's a really important priority for me. Um, I know another really important priority is affordability. So people are having a hard time uh, finding places to live that are affordable to be able to stay in Coquitlam or in the lower mainland. Um, and I think also, Along with that, we're seeing unprecedented growth. Uh, and and I think it's important that we think about what kind of community we're going to have as we grow. Um, Coquitlam City Council has generally done good government for the past term. Uh, there are some issues that we can we should make progress on, and I want to come and support uh, those issues. Awesome. So thank you. Um, maybe if we could just step back to uh, climate action. And um, can you tell us a little bit more about that? The climate action plan is on the work plan. What would you, um, what do you think are the main concerns with uh, Coquitlam as far as climate action concerns are? And what would you bring forward to the table as a city councillor? What actions would you like to see? Right. Um, so we know from um... Uh, the Climate 2050 report from Metro Vancouver that the two biggest sources of emissions in Metro Vancouver are personal vehicles mm -hmm. and buildings. Uh, so there are some measures already in place and I think there's more we can do. So uh, for buildings, um, other municipalities such as Port Moody have policies that ensure that new buildings are going to have uh, the, the best heating for the climate which is at this point heat pumps. And I think that's something Coquitlam can can do to, that's a big thing we can do with new buildings. We can also look at ways to help make sure old buildings can be retrofit. Um, and I think that then the other issue being personal vehicles, we need to find ways to A, get people out of their cars so that people can uh, do all their business, uh, all, commute to work without a car. Um, and. And on the other hand, uh, enable people who want to have electric vehicles to have those charged. Um, and I think those are the two two sort of big areas. And there's some specific policy points uh, that would push that along quite a bit. OK, great. And then what would you, like with the Climate Action Plan, there are things that you mentioned that the city could take action on. What kind of things would you be encouraging your constituents to do um, to sort of build resiliency, <clears throat> both amongst themselves 
as individuals and families, as well as um, with respect to the whole community. So what could your constituents do to contribute to um, effective climate action? Yeah, so I think um, individuals can take action on climate for sure by making personal choices to not use their car and uh, if they have a, the power to do it, to change what their home heating system is to uh, a home heating system that doesn't produce uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, on the other hand, I, I think that people, when they're taking individual actions, it's it's sometimes hard for people to do that in this difficult economy. Uh, so I would never put the pressure entirely on an individual. And I think if people can do anything, is to join collective action. So find a way that you can join in climate action collectively with other people uh, to make sure that everybody has to do it. Because if you're doing it by yourself, someone else is making all kinds of emissions and they don't care, then we're not going to solve this problem. What we need to do is make sure it happens with everybody. And at every level. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we need the province and the federal government to, to be doing things too. Right. Okay. Um, and I think you had talked a little bit about development in, in Coquitlam, and I think we're seeing unprecedented growth and development right now in the city. And with that, you know, it brings opportunities, but it also brings a number of challenges. What are some of the challenges that you think face Coquitlam um, as they're as they're going through this uh, process of unprecedented development? Yeah, I think that's a good question. Um, like, we're seeing these challenges. Sometimes we're not seeing the consequences. Mm -hmm. So, um, if if somebody's living somewhere at a particular level of rent and has a particular community, and then or or you know they're a homeowner and the development comes in and upends them, they may not stay in Coquitlam to sort of talk about their story. So we may not hear the stories of people who are being affected by this. And I think it's important that the city consider the people who live in Coquitlam uh, as we're developing. So how do we keep those people here? Like, what can we do um, to encourage those people to stay and to make it possible for them to say that so that we can actually hear their stories? Right. Uh, and I think um, Burnaby uh, has been through this and they've addressed this in a number of areas. And I think there's some push for additional policies. Mm -hmm. So um, we have, but we haven't heard that. There hasn't been a voice of people who've been demo evicted in Coquitlam. Uh, there's not much organizing on the ground for that. So we actually don't know how much of that is happening. Mm -hmm. um, Coquitlam has an affordable housing strategy. Um, but I think there's a, there are other things we can do. We can be protecting renters and protecting neighborhoods. And I think the, the big picture is it's an opportunity. We can build a city for the future that, um, that has a place for everyone, that's enjoyable and vibrant for, for everybody. We need the people who are here are members of our community and they contribute to what's going on. And we need to create a space where they can stay and everybody can thrive together. And I think one of the challenges we've um, got with development and building more housing and more housing options is trying to balance that with what we keep as a natural space or um, how we can retain some of our natural spaces. How do we find that balance? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's a challenge too, because I think we're, uh, we're definitely pinched up against the forest and we also have older neighborhoods with with excellent tree cover, uh, beautiful parks, and beautiful just sort of natural spaces that are not neither parks nor forests particularly, mm -hmm. but they have natural value. Um, and I think I think that all has to be considered in how we're making choices about where we build and where we develop. There's a lot being done. There's a lot of housing being built right by SkyTrain's very tall buildings with lots of housing, and that's great. Uh, but we're also building way out. We're 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 spreading out. We're we're cutting down trees and building uh, in that area. And I think there's this idea of the missing middle, sort of this medium level divide that's in between, and that doesn't necessarily happen at the edge of the city or in the forest. And it doesn't. It's it's also not this giant tower stuff we're doing at SkyTrain, and we're not doing as much of that. The, the, from 
from what it sounds like, it sounds like this is going to be an exciting opportunity for you to um, to create a new voice, another voice that might not necessarily have been heard on council. Um, and I, I think I can speak for Nancy at the same time that it's exciting to to hear. Um, as Nancy and I have, have always been interested in the environment and things like that, it's, in, it's interesting and exciting to hear somebody who's strong and passionate about it. But today, unfortunately, we've run out of time for our... Um, for our conversation. We hope to have you back in the future and maybe we can expand on some of the, that side of things as well. But for today, uh, that's it for us from um, We've Got Issues, speaking to Ben Perry, a candidate for the City of Coquitlam's Council in this, uh, this fall's upcoming elections. I'd like to again thank everyone uh, for watching our program and we'd like to thank Tri-City Community Television for uh, hosting us and thank you very much.